Making bistro style crepes at home is really easy. The good news is it's made with common pantry staples that I bet you already have. Crepe batter is composed of really simple ingredients, but it's how you mix them that impacts its pliable texture. The base is using all-purpose flour. It's between 10 to 13% protein, which is going to give you a nice flexible texture, but it still will be super tender. Add one cup to a bowl. You can make the French style pancakes either sweet or savory. If you do decide to make them sweet, add one tablespoon of granulated sugar. To ensure that they don't taste bland, add an eighth teaspoon of salt. If you're making savory crepes, add a quarter teaspoon and omit the sugar. Just whisk this all together to distribute the fine particles. For this hand mixing method, we're going to combine the wet ingredients in a bowl. Add two large eggs. The eggs are going to bind everything together and it's the only leavening agent in the recipe. Compared to regular pancakes that are tall and fluffy and have chemical leavening agents like baking soda or baking powder, you're going to get a really nice tender and flat pancake. Add 3 quarter cups of whole milk or you could use 2%. The extra fat is going to make the pancakes super tender but if you go with heavy cream, they're going to get really dense so you don't want that. Also add a half a cup of water, one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract to bump up the sweet flavor. Whisk everything together. Add two tablespoons of melted butter. Make sure it's not above 140 degrees or it's going to make the eggs curdle. First make a well in the center of the flour mixture. Pour in the butter. You could also use coconut oil or vegetable oil instead of butter, but flavor won't be as delicious. Now gradually whisk in the wet ingredients. The brief mixing develops the gluten bonds in the flour, making the crepes more pliable so that you could fold or roll them. However, the high ratio of liquids is going to dilute that gluten, so it's not going to be so tough and rubbery. To ensure that all the dry lumps of flour are removed, we're going to strain the batter. Use your whisk to push the batter through. Ooh, the batter is nice and smooth, but it's really important to let this rest for an hour. This allows the proteins and starches to swell so that you have a better structure for the crepe when you make it in the pan and it doesn't fall apart. Make sure to cover the bowl with plastic wrap to prevent any moisture from evaporating. You could even make this 24 hours in advance. The second method is using a blender and it's super quick and easy. The key to preventing dry pockets at the bottom of the blender cup is to add the liquid ingredients first. Add two large eggs, three quarter cups of whole milk, a half a cup of water, one teaspoon of vanilla, one cup of flour, one tablespoon of sugar, an eighth teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of melted butter. Blend on medium speed until smooth, about 40 to 45 seconds. And that's it, it's all ready. Blending creates a really light batter. However, it also makes a lot of bubbles. As you can see, there's a ton on the surface and this makes the batter a lot more fragile when it's cooked. To remove those bubbles, we're going to strain the batter. The batter has been chilling for an hour. As you can see, it's nice and thick. However, you want it to be the consistency of heavy cream so you don't get a really thick pancake. Use a little bit of water up to a quarter cup to just dilute the consistency a little bit. Wow, this looks perfect. Now you're ready to make some crepes. You don't need any fancy equipment to make gourmet crepes at home. Here's my secret technique. Crepes are so popular that they even have their own pans dedicated to making them. They usually have really shallow sides, but you know what? We don't need to buy something like that. We could use a nonstick pan that you already have at home. You've got a couple of options. A smaller 8-inch pan if you want a little baby crepe. A 10-inch pan is great if you want a hearty serving. And for a jumbo crepe, just like the ones that they make at cafes, use a 12-inch. It's important to grease the pan to prevent the batter from sticking. I like to use butter, however you could also use ghee, clarified butter, or vegetable oil. To make preparation really fast and easy, I like to first cut the butter into little cubes about a half teaspoon in size for a 10 inch pan. Alternatively, you can use melted butter and a pastry brush just to give a light coating on the surface. Heat the pan over medium heat for one minute. 
You want the pan to be nice and hot before you add the batter so that it cooks really quickly and you get a really delicate texture. Once I can feel the heat on the palm of my hand, it's time to add the butter. Add one piece of the pan a swirl. You don't want the pan to be drenched with butter. You just want a light coating. So take a piece of paper towel and just soak up that excess butter so you, that you leave a thin film. Add a quarter cup of batter to the six o'clock position in your pan. Now tilt the pan so that the batter runs down the sides, creating a circular shape. If you see any holes in the pancake, no worries, just add a little bit of batter. Cook until the edges start to lift from the side of the pan and become lightly golden brown. Also, you'll know when to flip when you see that the surface looks dry instead of wet. That means the moisture has been evaporated and it's time to flip. Cook the first side for about 45 to 60 seconds. Then use a spatula and give it a flip. Ooh, this is beautiful. Cook for about 10 to 30 more seconds. Transfer to a plate to keep warm and make the next batch. The more crepes that you cook, the hotter the pan's going to get, so just make sure to adjust the heat as needed. To keep the crepes warm, just stack them on top of each other. You know you made some good crepes. When you stretch it, it's still pliable and doesn't tear apart. This will make it really easy to roll or fold. Now you're ready to add your favorite toppings and fillings. For a savory French-style brunch, give these mushroom crepes a try. Heat a large pan over medium heat. Melt two tablespoons of butter. Add a half a cup of diced red onion, tablespoon of chopped thyme. Saute this until it's nice and fragrant, about a minute. Add a teaspoon of minced garlic. You don't want the garlic to burn, just saute it till it's fragrant, about 30 seconds. Add a pound of sliced brown mushrooms. Season the mushrooms with one teaspoon of kosher salt and a half teaspoon of black pepper. Saute the mushrooms until the moisture is released, about five to six minutes. The mushrooms are nice and tender. Add in four cups of baby spinach. Just cook it down until the spinach leaves are wilted. This will only take about one to two minutes. Turn off the heat and add a third cup of heavy cream to the mixture. This prevents the dairy from curdling. Sprinkle in about two teaspoons of either chopped chives or parsley. Just stir to combine to make a nice creamy sauce. Add about a third cup of filling in the center of each crepe. Sprinkle on some Gruyere, which is a nice Swiss cheese. I like to add a little bit of Parmesan for a punch of umami salty flavor. Add some more chives for freshness, then just roll it up. To serve the mushroom crepes, I like to add the creamy sauce on top and a few pieces of mushrooms and spinach. Sprinkle on some more Parmesan cheese. Oh yeah, that looks so good. More chives and a few fresh thyme leaves. Now you're ready to eat. Don't start your day without these decadent Nutella crepes. Spread some of the hazelnut spread on the crepe. You could use as little or as much as you'd like. It's a combination of chocolate, roasted hazelnuts, pureed until you get a silky smooth spread. I like to add on some sliced bananas and a little bit of cinnamon. It just enhances that chocolatey nutty flavor. Sprinkle some of your favorite nuts on top. I've got sliced almonds. Now you can fold crepes many different ways. You can either go with a simple cigar shape where you roll it up like this. You could fold in the sides to make a little package and then fold over. Fold it in half and then in half again to make a fan. I'm going to stick to rolling this. I think it'll be a little bit easier with the amount of filling. Garnish this with some powdered sugar a drizzle of chocolate sauce, and crunchy nuts on top. Nutella crepes for all you chocolate lovers. Did you know that you can have crepes anytime the craving hits? Don't head to a fancy restaurant. Instead, use my make-ahead tips to save you time and money. Tip one, make the batter a day in advance. That way you can just grab it out of the refrigerator and start cooking when you're ready to eat. Tip two, crepes store really well. Let them cool down completely when you make a large batch, then cover with plastic wrap and foil and refrigerate for up to three days. 
Tip three, to enjoy crepes all year long, freeze them. Just place them in between a piece of parchment paper or even paper towel. They're really thin, so this is going to help prevent sticking and make it really easy to remove and separate when you're ready to eat. Place them in a large resealable plastic bag. Press out any air and seal it up. Freeze for up to a month, then just defrost when you're ready to eat. Here are different ways to reheat the crepes. Heat over medium-low heat, add the crepe, and let it warm up until it's nice and hot. Then give it a flip. To reheat the crepes using a microwave, just place a damp paper towel on top and microwave for about 30 seconds. To reheat a large batch in the oven, just place them on top of each other. Heat at 275 degrees for about 10 minutes. Now that you know how to make sweet and savory crepes at home, what toppings and fillings would you add? I would love to know. Get the full recipe over on my website, jessicagavin.com. See you in the next video.